So now it's good to be with you. Now we're just going to get back. We're getting back into that. I know you're thinking, well, Jay, we've gone to history. We've gone to philosophy. So we 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 basically. It's good to be with you. JasonBirthPreacher.com, Facebook, and Twitter. Good to be with you. Now we're on the meat of the Word of God on the Trinity. But let's recap. We did some historical reflection, and we noted that we've got to go deeper into history if we're going to make statements about church history, uh, etc. Secondly, uh, we looked at the relationship between philosophy and the Trinity. And, and my caveat was to be very careful that you don't get sidetracked to being a rationalist. <clears throat> and thirdly, we're now going to look at the biblical content concerning the doctrine of the Trinity. Okay? We're looking at this book, excuse me. Retire. Looking at this book, and we're looking at um, at the Trinity from a biblical point of view. I'm just getting a bit tired, so forgive me. Uh, scriptural proofs for the doctrine of the Trinity. Trinity. The doctrine of the Trinity is very decidedly a doctrine of revelation. It is true that human reason may suggest some thoughts to substantiate the doctrine that men have sometimes, on purely philosophical grounds, abandoned the idea of a bare, a bare unity in God and introduced the idea of living movement and self-distinction. And it is also true that Christian experience would seem to demand some such construction of the doctrine of God. At the same time, it is a doctrine which we would not have known, nor would we would have been able to maintain with any degree of confidence on the basis of experience alone, and which is brought to our knowledge only by God's special revelation. Therefore, it is of the utmost importance uh, that we gather the scriptural proofs. Some of the early church fathers and even some later theologians, disregarding the progressive nature of God's revelation, gave the impression that the doctrine of the Trinity was completely revealed in the Old Testament. On the other hand, Socinians and Arminians were of the opinion that it was not found there at all. Both were mistaken. The Old Testament does not contain a full revelation of the Trinity existence of God, but does contain several indications of it. And this is exactly what might be expected. The Bible never deals with the doctrine of the Trinity as an abstract truth, but reveals the Trinitarian life, the various relations as a living reality, to a certain extent in connection with the works of creation and providence, but particularly in relation to the work of redemption. Its most fundamental revelation is a revelation given in facts rather than in words. And this revelation increases in clarity in the measure in which the redemptive work of God is more clearly revealed as in the incarnation of the Son, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the more glorious reality of the Trinity stands out in the facts of history and clearer the statements of the doctrine become. The fuller revelation of the Trinity in the New Testament is due to the fact that the Word became flesh, that the Holy Spirit took up his abode in the Church. Proof of the Trinity has become sometimes been found in the distinction of Jehovah and Elohim, and also in the plural, plural Elohim, but the former is entirely unwarranted, and the later is to say the least very dubious, though Rottenberg still maintains it in his work De Trinitate in Israel's God's Begrip. It is far more plausible that the passages in which God speaks of himself in the plural contain an indication of personal distinction in God, though even these do not point to a trinity, but only to a plurality of persons. So that's Genesis 1, uh, 26. Genesis 1, 26. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them... Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. And Genesis 11, 7. It says, Go to, let us go down, and there confound their languages, that they may not understand one another's speech. 
Still clearer indications of such personal distinctions are found in those passages which refer to the angel of Jehovah, who is on the one hand identified with Jehovah, and on the other hand distinguished from him. Genesis 16, 7-13 Genesis 16 Genesis 16, 7 to 13. So. And the angel of the Lord found her by the fountain of water in the wilderness, by the fountain of the way of Shur. And he said, Agai, Sarah's maid, hence comest thou, and thither wilt thou go. And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress Sarai. The angel of the Lord said unto her, Return to the mistress, and submit thyself unto her hands. The angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, and it shall not be numbered for and it shall shall not be numbered for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and shalt bear a son, and shalt call his name Ishmael, because the Lord had heard thy affliction. Uh, Genesis 18, 1 to 21. Genesis 18, 1 to 21. And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Marba, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day, and he lifted up his eyes, and looked, and lo, there three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself towards the ground and said, My Lord, if now I have found favour in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched and wish, wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. And I will fetch a morsel of bread and comfort your hearts after that you shall pass on from thereafter that you come to your servant. And they said, so do as thou hast said. And Abraham hastened unto the tent, and Sarah said, Make ready quickly three measures of the final meal, kneel, knead it, and make cake upon the earth. And Abraham ran unto the earth, and fetched a calf tender and good, and gave it unto a young man, gave it unto a young man, and he hastened to dress it. And he took butter and milk, and the calf which he had dressed, and set it before them. And it stood by them under the tree, and they did eat. They said unto him, Where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind him. Therefore Sarah laughed. Within himself, within herself, saying, I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also? And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child which am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At that time appointed, I will return unto thee, appointed the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. And Sarah denied, saying, I laughed not, for she was afraid. And he said, Nay, but thou didst laugh. And the men rose up from thence and looked toward Sodom. And Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? And seeing that Abraham shall surely come a great and mighty nation, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him, and that he shall command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he spoke of him. And the Lord said, Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, because their sin is very grievous, I will go down and see whether they have done all together to the cry of it, which is come unto me, and if not, I will know. The men turned their faces from thence and went toward Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord, and Abraham drew near and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous 
with the wicked. Pre-adventure there will be 50 righteous within the city. Wilt thou destroy and not spare the place for the 50 righteous that are therein? That be far from thee to do the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked shall be far from thee. Shall not the judge of the earth do right? The Lord said, If I find in Sodom fifty righteous within the city, then I will spare all the places of their sakes, for their sakes. And Abraham answered and said, Behold, now I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which am but dust and ashes. We've got, we've got to verse 27 there. So the angels are called the Lord. Malachi chapter 3 verse 1. Malachi uh, chapter 3 verse 1 Behold I will send my messenger and he shall prepare the way before me and the Lord whom you speak shall shall suddenly come to his temple etc. Then you can look at also in the passages which is the word of God or the, which the word of God or wisdom of God is personified Psalm 33 4 to 6 Proverbs 8 12 to 31 in so can some cases more than one person is mentioned Psalm 33 verse 6 Psalm 45 verse 6 and 7 Hebrews 1 verse 8 and 9 in others God is the speaker and mentions both the Messiah and the Spirit or the Messiah is the speaker who mentions both God and the Spirit. Isaiah 48 16, uh, Isaiah 61 verse 1, Isaiah 63 verse 9 and 10. Thus the Old Testament contains a clear anticipation of the fuller revelation of the Trinity in the New Testament. So I hope that's been of interest to you. You can look up those verses and see what the New Testament, uh, the Old Testament uh, teaches concerning the Trinity. God bless you and love to everybody out there. God bless.